Good morning, everyone. Somebody asked the other day about CP application. I'm on a wrap and go figure. I'm about to put one on there, so I figured why not go live? Just have a random video in the middle of the week or the beginning of the week. Hi, Pete. Hey, Gilbert. <clears throat> <laughs> if I sound cheery, don't be fooled. <laughs> I've actually had a decent morning with Lincoln, so it's actually pretty okay. Even though he woke up dumb early again. <clears throat> Alright, so, I use Rod Dancer's Chroma Seal. This is, I've had awesome results with this. Um, hey Jason. Uh... This is the one I use, never had any issues with it. I'll always stick with it. Uh, once I find something that, you know, I get along with, I don't, I don't go out of my way to change it. <laughs> and if you ever work with CP, it says to stir it gently um, prior to using it. I just, I use these cheap, 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 cheap brushes when we do epoxy or working with CP or anything of that nature. And I literally just stick it in the bottle and just use the back end of it to just kind of slowly swirl it. <clears throat> just a few times, try to pull the excess off and, you know, don't really want to waste any. Especially since this is the bottle I dumped on my jeans a month ago. That was fun. I like these little throwaway, throwaway brushes. Um, you guys hear me say that a lot. I'm lazy. I really am. I'm lazy. I know these guys have it down to the science with how they clean their stuff, but I just, I don't want to do it. <laughs> uh... Randy, I do not use CP on NCP threads unless I have mixed, like, Madeira with NCP. This wrap is nothing but Madeira, so this entire wrap gets it. Um, you know, but if I mix it with, like, the Confederate flag one I'm working on still, the flag, the red, and the blue that's on that wrap are all Madeira. But the black and the white is NCP uh, Pack Bay. And I've never had any issues with it causing dramas or anything like that. So. Alright. I don't know. I'm trying to do it where you guys can see it. I'm alone, so I don't have my cameraman. But we all know Wes isn't so good with camera. <laughs> Love you, babe. <laughs> Alright, prior to starting this. <laughs> You have to know, see, mine is still taped on. I have not done my tie-offs. I will not do the tie-offs until I get probably, see, you can see all my, my rolls here. Depends. I might do it after the first coat and it dries completely, or I may just do all three and go from there. I'm probably just going to do one coat, though, and do the tie-offs. Anyway, so on this one, uh, I have... To unfortunately, when I was setting this up, I forgot to flip my 0 and 180 numbers. Uh, so, unfortunately, this should have been the top, but it's not. I'm just going to have to roll with a half pattern. And it'll still look good. I'll do some funky something here uh, to make it work. But I have to cut this pattern in half. So, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to put CP from the center of this this way. Because I want to be able to cut those threads jagged whenever the CP dries. And I don't want to be fighting with threads that are kind of glued with each other. <clears throat> and here we go. So, everything I do is on speed.
and I make a mess. I know the first time when I started working with CP, I was freaked out the first time I put it on there because it darkened the threads so much. I was like, no! But whenever it soaked in, it returned back to its same color, so don't freak out. Now when I apply CP, I follow the directions. Um, it says to do one coat and let it dry. Or it says to do two to three coats total and let them dry in between, which is usually about an hour. It just kind of depends on how hot it is around here. Um, Right now, March can't make up its mind whether it wants to be 80 degrees or if it wants to be 30, so. It still dries in about an hour, no matter how cold it is, but sometimes you can put it on in 20 minutes. It just really depends. Now, down here on this end. This is top. I'm cutting that pattern in half. Okay. Uh, John, this wrap, I think I did this wrap in a total of six hours. I don't consider myself fast. I don't consider myself slow, but I don't consider myself fast. Alright, the entire wrap area that's going to be left is, is done. Now usually what I'll do is I'll put it to turn until the excess dries because I don't wipe it off at all. Um, the reason why I stopped it is I want you guys to see. You see all these little clumps that look like see all that you can see it really you can see it really good on the seams. Do you know could you guess what that's from? before I tell you. Uh, Gilbert, the wrap will be 10 inches with the tie-offs total. I probably wrapped a 12 inch just to make sure these last few patterns on the edges didn't screw up. Good morning, Andy. John, I got no problem doing a build for your wife. Um, my husband does all the quotes and stuff because he knows most of that stuff off the top of his head. So I can get him to send you a PM or you can send Wes a PM and we can discuss it. <laughs> all right. Anybody that's watching, do y'all know what those little fuzzy things are? Or clumps that have popped up? Actually, Greg, it's not bubbles. <laughs> I 
Anybody else want to guess? All right, I waited long enough. <clears throat> if somebody guesses, then sorry. Um, what those are, for lack of a better word, is where I was packing. I fuzzed up the thread because I was forcing thread in. Here, try to get the glare off of it. So you see how most of that happens on my seams. That's where most of the work goes into when I'm packing. Because instead of just being like, oh, I can burnish it and close it, I actually forced more thread in there than I would assume most people would. But I like to make sure my colors stay true, so I pack the crap out of it. Um, in a space that I really only had room for six threads, I made ten fit. That's, that's how I work. <laughs> um, but that's all that is. Now, under epoxy, once I get through the first uh, coat of epoxy... Those aren't going to poke through because they're not actually shredded. They're just kind of fuzzed. Um, you know, it happens. You're not going to see it. <clears throat> Why do we use CP on wraps? Like, what is, what is CP's job with wraps? Yep, that's a good point. It does seal the thread and it keeps the color. There's also one other super important job that CP does that not a lot of people know other than keeping thread true to color. And actually, Pete, that's just me being rough on the thread. That's not any issues with the CP mix mixing with the thread. It can happen. Absolutely. But that's just how I pack. Y'all hear me talk about I manhandle wraps. I manhandle them, as you can see from the CP showing all the fuzzies. <laughs> Nobody guessing about CP? CP pulls the oxygen out of your thread. So typically, when you apply CP to wraps, and you do it correctly, and you don't try to do one coat, or you know, you go through the actual steps of one every hour, your last one let it dry for at least eight hours, it helps to reduce bubbles. Yep, absolutely, Greg. Um, because it's pulling all the oxygen out. So once you apply CP, you shouldn't have any bubbles on your epoxy. So that's why CP is pretty important. <laughs> now somebody's probably going to go, well, what if I put it on NCP thread? 
they gonna pull the bubbles out of that too? <laughs> Me too, Chris. The first time I put it on here, I was like, uh, I don't like this. <laughs> Gilbert, that plaid pattern is going to have to wait till when I have time to play. And I do not have time to play. I have time to work. I still got... Lord, I've got eight builds i got to get caught up on. <clears throat> Before I literally can clear my uh, schedule to be able to play around with um, thread. So on my to-do list. But if, if you put CP on NCP thread, it's not going to affect the NCP thread. Now I can only speak for Pack Bay NCP. I have not, I don't use Pro Wrap, I don't use Fuji. Um, Fish Hawk thread that I have is regular nylon, it's not NCP. So that's the only, when I'm, when dealing with Pack Bay NCP thread, CP does not have any issues with it. I can't speak for the other brands, but... <clears throat> but I don't wipe it off. I let it soak in. And I leave it turning so it stays... It doesn't drip off of it. <clears throat> and that's it. And I'll do this another two times today. I put this coat on for 11.30, 11.45, so I can't do another one until 12.30 at the earliest. And that last coat, I'll let it sit overnight, depending on when I get to it today. depends on how long my child sleeps. Now, over here on this end, you can see the difference between the... It's starting to kind of dry just a little bit right there. But you can see the difference in what the thread looks like without it on there. Versus what happens when it is applied. So, but that's all I got today. Just show you how I put CP on, which is real short, simple, and quick. I'll leave this one turning until it dries, and then we'll go again. So, I've got other projects I need to work on while I'm waiting on this one to dry. <laughs> so. Rick, I do use three coats, always. And that last coat always dries overnight for at least eight, at least six to eight hours. Always. Part of the reason why I don't do the tie-offs before I put the CP on is because you have less chance of the wrap jumping. Uh, I know some of you guys have watched me tie off a wrap, and I've told you it's jumped. And I, I've had a wrap jump this much when I went to cut it off because it was an elongated angle. And, boy, that was a pain to deal with uh, to keep the threads from doing crazy stuff. <clears throat> uh, you're welcome, Greg. You're welcome, Pete. Uh, Gilbert. What you're talking about. This, how I did the stars. I don't know if it's going to focus that well. There it goes. So what I did with this wrap, because this wrap is the one that's... I'm trying not to touch the other one. Here we go. This wrap has... 
The red and the blue are Madeira. The white and the black is Pac Bay. Okay. As you can see, this black, this was before I had Voodoo Black. <clears throat> Pac Bay Black has a, a grayish tint to it. It's not truly black. So what I did was I CP'd the entire thing first. One coat. On my second go round with CP, I started to add the stars. And what I did was for each star, I would put CP on this band and I would take the stars and I'd drop them. Now CP's wet and it will move around on you, so I would just poke these where I wanted them to sit. And before I and I would place them and let them kind of halfway dry before I would turn the rod because this one actually spirals around um, the blank. So I couldn't exactly apply them all at the same time, but I would just wait until one flag dried and then I'd move to the next one. Wait till that one dried and I'd move to the next one. It was a little tedious, but, it, you know, I think well worth it. But that's how I did it. And then once that first coat dried, I went back and I just basically <laughs> dropped CP over the entire thing here and let it dry. Then on the third coat, I put it on power and did that. Once you get three coats on those stars, even when you go to apply epoxy under speed, they're not going to come off. You have to you have to pick them off. So this has only got one coat on it, and I can still feel the the stars through it because you know it's just one coat. I wasn't trying to cover everything, but some of them are covered and some of them aren't. I'm trying to get through this build, so it's only taking me freaking forever. Luckily, that's a family member, so I can explain why that one isn't built yet. I mean, if it's spiraling, Gilbert, yeah, do it one at a time. I mean, you just kind of have to test what works for you. I mean, CP takes a little while for it to really start getting tacky because it has water mixed in with it. So you've got time to place it. If you've got one that's running along a straight axis and not spiraling around the blank, then I could do the entire top at once and then the entire top at the, or the entire bottom at once, too. Um... But just because I was trying to make sure that all the stars were all pointed in the same direction and they were all somewhat straight, they move around a tiny bit. You kind of have to keep checking on them. But that's just how I did it. Wrap and cut Christy. Oh, Lord. I've been called many things. Magic Mary, wrap and cut Christy, murder wraps. I can't, I can't remember everything. Magic Mary was the other one. <laughs> I don't spin... The like if I'm putting stars on a flag, I won't spin it until the stars are dry. Like the first when I'm placing the stars down initially, that rod's not turning. I'm just letting that CP soak in, and I'll leave it stationary. Once I once the, all the stars are placed and they're dried on there, if I have to put another coat of CP on it, then yes, I'll put it on the drying mode. Or on the wrapping mode where I can just and apply it. Yeah, you probably could. But I don't.
There's just some things I'm finicky about. I don't really want the glue to dry any faster or the CP to dry any faster than it than it can because I want it to soak into the threads as much as possible. That's the only reason why I don't speed up the process. But absolutely, if you're in a hurry or if you're placing stars per se, then yeah, you could definitely use the a heat gun, hair dryer, whatever. My uh, wrappers and are not exactly 100% clean all the time, as you can see. There's always thread somewhere, so I don't really want to. I don't really want to blow dust and stuff around <laughs> and get that stuck in the wrap. Now for this one, if anybody's got any suggestions on some uh, colored feathers that I can get a hold of, I'm looking for purple and fuchsia. <laughs> anybody's got any suggestions? I need these colors. And the only bird I found with those colors is a hummingbird and that's illegal to kill them, so... So if anybody's got any suggestions for that, let me know. Yeah, Tim, I've got peacock feathers. The only thing that I did not like here's some. I was thinking about using this. Now this one in particular had some of those like pink tints on the outside of it, which was awesome. And I thought, ooh, that'd be cool. But when I put it up against this, I don't like it. Because I feel like the eye is going to take away from the wrap, from the entire thing blending together. If that makes sense? Now I could use these little, I have a bunch of those little thin feathers that are just like a... Uh, I don't know what they're called, but they're long. <clears throat> but the one peacock feather I have put on a rod. Well, actually, I didn't do this. Uh, Arnott did this at our gathering the last time, and I just haven't taken it off. It looks good. And go figure, it's another metallic green blank. Can you tell we like it? <laughs> um, it just darkens so much. It looks, it looks good. I have to play around with the concept. I've got a few ideas for it, but... I'm always open to suggestions. And yeah, Tim, I do need to check out some fly shops. I've got some ostrich feathers that are dyed purple. But, which I kind of like them. The only thing I don't like is how they darken when they get on the blank. We tested one last night and it turned almost, it turned this color, this dark color here, just not as pretty as I would want it to be. So, I don't know, I still got to play around with that. I got to think about that for a little bit. I may end up doing peacock though. I think I can make it work. Especially since um, somebody likes them. <laughs> Actually, Tim, when I was reading up, because I, you know, I was, 
I was looking for that these colors, and you know, hummingbird was one of the ones that popped up, and I started reading about it. You know, you can go to jail over a hummingbird feather. <laughs> I did not want they they literally if um, anybody ever found out that it was a hummingbird feather or somebody saw it and they're like, those are hummingbird feathers. You could go to jail because it's illegal to kill them. You would have to have proof that the bird died of natural causes. And I don't know if a cat being put in a position to go catch one is a natural cause. <laughs> so I was like, ah, I'm going to have to find something else. <laughs> I didn't realize hummingbirds were a protected species at all. I was like, damn. I'm not going to lie, that peacock feather looks kind of cool with that, though. And it's in the split grip area. It's not here at the wrap. So I may be able to pull that off and it'd be good. Uh, the black and white wood is... Guinea, I believe. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% positive. I've got some extra of this, and I've got these, the jungle cock, and we've got plenty of these, and I've got more of that. I definitely was thinking about, I was wondering how a painted feather would look. That was one of the things I had in my head. I'll come up with something. Once that CP dries, the next step is to carefully tie offs on that thing. Later, Tim. Alright, guys. I gotta run. I gotta get busy. Uh, family's got a dinner tonight. Definitely need to get as much work done as I can now because I got a feeling I won't be in the mood to come work after that tonight, so <laughs> y'all have a good day, and we'll see you later.